Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me the, uh, to share um, our work on transportation logistics sustainability in this very uh, important uh, symposium. And uh, it's my honor to have a chance here to learn a lot of stuff since this morning I have learned a lot of stuff already. And today, specific, I'm going to share with you is uh, kind of one of the very important components in the agriculture, which is the uh, agricultural logistics. So a lot of time, I think when you purchase a agricultural product, there's a fair amount of money that's coming from logistics. So the issue here is how do we cut down um, the cost? And that's quite important. It's not only to reduce money for the energy, but also it's cut down the carbon footprint. They're okay. Hold on a second. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Should be all right, right? Oh, a little bit of delay. Okay. It's very, very during a break when you exercise a little bit. So, yeah. So, uh, the one, the one I'm going to share with you is before I give the talk, and uh, in order to get an idea in terms of the uh, agricultural logistics. Yesterday, I specifically spent the time in Union, the Union County. So in the morning, kind of meeting with the logistic people that carry the food. So you can see this slide here, which is the, on the left-hand side, the agricultural site, and then through the uh, truck, and then loading the goods to Taipei or even Gaochong. And I check with them how much cost. There's a different company there. So as you can see on the top there, that easily one company that can spend four million dollar, NP dollars just per month. And um, so the question today the talk I have is that possibly cut down that from five million per month and to four million per month you can easily cut down twenty percent. As many of the I think I've shared with you is quite possible. Uh, so that's that's the first item, the first question there is is that possible to can accept the uh, fuel consumption cost um, in the uh, uh, the uh, agricultural logistics, uh, specific uh, with with that technology. And even yes, I think how did you cut down that fuel consumption? So there are two stages here. The concept there is similar to the uh, the your health diagnosis. The first step here is try to scientifically diagnose and, and identify the factors contributing to fuel consumption. And then the, the second step is to set up the uh, action plan to reduce the fuel consumption. So those are the one that I'm going to share with you uh, in terms of that. So this is the outcome. I, I think I'll kind of quickly share with you the, uh, my research team at Georgia Tech. And I'm going to share with you what's the methodology we did in the vehicle energy emission. Um, specific monitoring and diagnosis and the reduction. And also, I'm going to share with you some statistics in terms of transportation allergy emission. And then specific focus on the, uh, uh, the, the, the test that we have. Um, the methodology is developing not only from Norway, but I think currently we are working with Volvo. Um, no, no, so we work with the automobile company, so this, that company, and we focus on the truck and buses. And that company is Brazil, so we develop the technology and smart data collection system using the smartphone uh, to understanding what are the process, what's the fuel consumption, so that way you can, uh, through the analysis, to cut down the fuel consumption. So we kind of ship the application to Brazil and doing analysis. So today I'm sharing with you is an actual data analysis. So how do we work on uh, with Volvo, uh, automobile company, specific focus on truck and buses. So I'm going to share with you some of the finding that we have. Um, 
So I kind of feel like our uh, component share with you a little bit where I come from, Georgia Tech. It's located in Atlanta. Atlanta is a 1996 Olympic game. And you can see each railway has a probably kind of 12 lanes um, on the uh, railway. And it was a heavy traffic. And the uh, uh, it's a hub of the, uh, the Atlanta airport is the busiest airport in the US. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's the busiest airport in the world too. Um, and then uh, you can see Coca-Cola and UPS, CNN, and CDC, all of those is located in Atlanta. It's a very energetic city, growing very quickly. Um, Georgia Tech is overall very strong in uh, engineer school. Uh, so this is College of Engineering, so 11 uh, major, 11 area, well, at least 10 in the nation in the U.S. So for example, like uh, industrial engineering and logistics is top one in the nation more than 28 years already. And we have located a lot of students I have is those uh, blue cover uh, with the uh, industrial engineering, logistics students, civil engineering, and uh, those different area there. This is my research time, so we are allowed that I heard is uh, they make a significant contribution. I'm a person give a talk. And so those are the one that uh, student, as, as you can see that uh, in order to make uh, um, the innovation research and study, I have a quite diverse research team. So the student, the PhD, the background from civil and environmental engineering. Also, I'm advising the uh, EC electrical computer engineering, computer science, ISYE, so that way we can do a lot of innovative stuff uh, without a limitation of the knowledge boundary. This is the research team. Uh, we love the sensor technology, so we're using sensor. The, the, the reason sensor is a lot of time you create a new opportunity to to change the whole uh, analysis of the whole operation. And then second is, once you collect those data, the data science, AI, computer vision, and GIS, like Google Maps, special analysis, that's what we're focusing on. We have both a major area. And today, specifically, I'm gonna to touch the one is we call energy emission. So the first area is infrastructure, and the second area is transportation safety. The third one is a vehicle uh, energy emission reduction. And then the fourth area is aging population. Uh, we focus on safe mobility. So over there, there in the whole big picture, a lot is this uh, symposium is kind of sustainability of the smart city. So we kind of focus on transportation, but it kind of impact in different area there. Uh, and specific today I'm going to share with you is the vehicle energy emission. So the key takeaway of what I'm going to share with you and what I'm going to get from my talk. The first one there, I'm going to share with you the importance of energy emission in transportation sector, especially at the truck and buses. And the second one there is uh, currently there is no smart data collection system or systematic a uh, way to, for the energy consumption monitoring diagnosis. You know, a lot of time you didn't know how you how much you consume. Do you know what impact your energy consumption if you from an agriculture a big truck and deliver uh, all the goods and uh, all the all the vegetables from the they say inland uh, county all the way to Taipei. So is there a way that you know, like a kind of human health, can you know that what's impact the, uh, the fuel consumption? So that way you can prioritize what you should cut down. The, the third one there is diagnosis to identify the factors contributing to the energy consumption. So that way we can get a better idea. It's kind of like you've been did that diagnosis and say, oh yeah, your health condition is not good. It's in a bad condition, but do you know what you should fix? Um, if there's no scientific approach that, that you know which one you should prioritize, that you didn't know is there some, is your alarm is not good or, or hot or which part you have no idea, then really it cannot improve efficiently. So uh, in a scientific approach, you need a diagnosis in terms of what's going on. 
the fourth point I'm going to take a look on and share with you is how much improvement could be. Every week, every week there that or every month I spend five million dollars on fuel consumption. As yesterday I talked with those uh, in Maine uh, County, those are logistic trucking company, and just one company. And uh, if you can cut down every month, I cut down from five million to four million. You save one million easily per month. That's a lot of money. The key thing here is not only the energy, but also you cut down the uh, emission. So in a way, that's kind of worth investing and get an idea on that. That's what we are focusing on and what I'm presenting and share with you. The other one is how did you, in a detailed mechanism, how did you cut down? So you kind of have three perspective. One is mechanical uh, perspective to optimize. Uh, how did you shift the gears, et cetera? And then the next, second one is well optimization. And the third one is very important. I think I want to share with you more uh, is driver behavior. How did you drive differently? And then uh, the end, I think I hope that, I think I hope that, is that 10 minutes, right? Left? Okay, <laughs> got it. Thank you. So this is the mission here that I mentioned to you. So now I'm kind of moving forward is the statistic, kind of give you an idea. So the key item there, you can see that uh, the fuel consumption for the, uh, the, the emission there, the gasoline, diesel, how much fuel consumption is going to produce. You know, you're
Different driver condition, etc. So you can compare fairly, but different, maybe different driver, different behavior. So that way you can you, you can scientifically analyze what's the impact on um, different driver and then um, what's the what's the relationship. This is kind of show you to some of the outcome there. You can see that on the top, the blue color is referred to the fuel consumption. The red color is toll, which is how much forces. So you can see the strong correlation between the toll and the fuel consumption, so this is quite natural. On the bottom there, you can see that uh, some of the data there is a with blue color is a fuel consumption, and the green there is RPM. So you can see that in the third green there, that's kind of, it, it's a, uh, fuel consumption becomes zero, but their speed's still very high. And what does that mean? Because we need to make sure the data is correct, okay? And so, this, this is the one that uh, you, you can see the relationship. I think I'll ship, this one here is the terrain. We can correlate the terrain, how that impacts the fuel consumption too. Train bottom is impact the fuel consumption too. So this is the one that um, we automatically extract the, the traffic, traffic bottom, those are impact the fuel consumption. And also railway, railway friction and also all those based on the data, 13% impact on the fuel consumption. So all those, those are, there's data showing that. And this is the one that quite specific show that to you. I think you can pay attention on this one. They have a specific route, 25 kilometer, right? And they have a good driver. And this person here, they kind of say, you, you drive crazy, <laughs> it's kind of very badly. And they wanted to know scientifically how much fuel consumption different. I think they kind of show up 39% difference. What does that mean? If I'm talking about 1% saving is 0.39 billion. This is more than 10%. I think this kind of echo to the same as I talked to Union province, I mean county yesterday. I think they say that driver will really change. They can cut down 5 million per month to 4 million. And the same driver, they just give them incentive. They're using different approach. So anyway, I think this is the one I kind of share with you. That in the future, what we try to put in together is kind of this one here. This is Atlanta, 100 kilometer. And each one kilometer or each one mile, and you have every hour, you have different color. Those could be high, the uh, energy uh, efficiency label. And then it quite require a lot of energy, and some of those less energy. And why that is different? Well, this one here is in the morning, is almost in the 8 a.m. is a traffic jam. So you're going to stop there, not only five minutes to go through there. You probably need to take around 30 minutes, just go through that couple of miles. So you're going to consume a lot of energy. So in a way, the energy efficiency, we envision the future will create this methodology here. So people can do the routing from Tennessee in two or 300 kilometers all the way to Florida, which route I should choose. I can cut down 10, 20% of my fuel consumption. But you need to have the base data. Base data really envision is that you should have those different color indicate different fuel consumption, but those the one change by hours. It's a function of the vehicle mechanics, as well as the railway profile, elevation, and then traffic condition, railway condition, weather condition, right? Those change. So that way that you can say that what time you should pass Atlanta, go all the way to Florida, you can cut down 10%, 20%. So those are the whole idea. And then a lot of time mechanical, you say that, how did you cut down the fuel consumption mechanical? This is kind of common sense that I mentioned it to you in terms of this one here. So, uh, in a way that uh, on the left hand side, you can start on zero, right? If you start, then on the y axis is how much forces you move. On the uh, x axis is the speed. When you are just starting your vehicle, probably you're using the first gear. First gear is on the top, so you require a lot of energy. I think for some reason my cursor, oh, here. So, this is the first, uh, this is the first gear. 
right? He requires a huge amount of energy. But if this driver continues to stay this way here, even he's driving 30 miles per hour, this is not efficient. He should ship that into the second gear, and then third gear. So there's a lot of opportunity on my own there. And so in a way, how did you control your driving on different situations with different gear shipped? Mechanical perspective, it's become quite important that you be able to control that. And the other one there is routing from the one that all the way from one location to the others. How did you, for example, from Tennessee or from the Yunnan to all the way to Taipei? This is kind of more fixed route. But I think in the US, like from Tennessee all the way through Georgia to the uh, Florida, that you need to know that in different time there, the different energy level, right? And then how do I choose the route? I can cut down the fuel consumption. So this is the last slide I uh, showed it to you. So basically for us is uh, we're kind of putting together this methodology through the data we work with Volvo. We find out there's a lot of potential to cut down fuel, fuel consumption, uh, especially agricultural fuel consumption. That's, that's kind of the one that deliver from Yun, Yunnan uh, County all the way to Taipei, to Kaohsiung, almost constantly deliver. If you can cut down 10, 20 percent fuel consumption, there's a lot of chance to cut down not only energy but emission uh, as a whole. So uh, there's a potential where we talk to them, even if in in, in county, um, that uh, can we do a pilot to test on that. And this is the last slide to show that to you that uh, a lot of uh, agency, I think they kind of support our study so that we can come on with this share with you. With that, I stop here. Thank you. Uh 经济财务方面的一些以前早期有收费战蔡教授这方面有个专场 for automation. Uh. Okay. So I think the question is, was, uh, I repeat a question where it was, uh, in the future probably is going to be EV. So in an EV, probably you do not a gear. So in a way, how you improve that? So that's a good question. I think I kind of cut a problem into two pieces there. Uh, first is from now to all the vehicle EV is take for a while. So now you still need to cut down tomorrow in terms of how much fuel consumption. So at least take four or five years, that's number one. Number two, in terms of electrical vehicle, yes, you did not change the, it's kind of just one, one ship there, right? But you're still putting your paddle how fast you push. So it's still driver behavior, still control everything. If you're down here, you still continue putting your paddle 
then that's part of the fuel consumption. That's what yesterday I learned from. I learned from there's a, one other company, there's this company. I thought she's quite smart. I think she's kind of setting up, say that, yeah, incentive. If you do this, you can cut down. So they, in a way, they have a real time monitoring and then they find out they're driving normally when they're downhill in certain location because that can cut down the fuel consumption. But answer your question, yes, I think even just one gear uh, in an EV, but you still need to push the pedal there, but in different speed, different rate, uh, that's going to impact uh, also the fuel consumption too. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, it's under the speech. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So I have one, one more question. I think you have this you use the smartphone, uh, smartphone uh, to uh, develop your technology. I think uh, I know the detail, but I want you can you introduce more detail to everyone today. I don't understand. I want to say is it has a technology that is using the smartphone to record the details. I want to say can you explain more clearly so that everyone can use it in their real life examples. Yeah, I think that's a good question. So the actually, I think the one as I mentioned there, that through our study, I can tell you if you are agriculture logistic, I can easily cut down ten or twenty percent your regular cost. That's possible. In the past, we didn't know, right? But we're using a lot of cases here, and then it even until yesterday, I talked to those logistic company. I just recognize they kind of encourage these thirty drivers just drive differently. You can cut down in one month five million. Fuel consumption in Taiwan to four four million dollars. So I think I just recognize that's very very likely you it's achievable. We kind of using a smartphone in a way when you drive because most of the time is you have no idea what's contributing the fuel consumption, right? So already I mentioned about the driver behavior that if I can capture that is using good driver and bad driver, but those are not subjective. Uh, it's too subjective. It's kind of not objective. So what we try to do is, can I use a smartphone? You have acceleration X Y Z, and you have gyro X Y Z and magnetometer. So can I capture a certain pattern? So right now you have the ten drivers there, right, working my company, and I should be able to develop a technology to tell you, say, who is the driver have high potential to save the fuel uh, energy. So then I give you an incentive, say that if It seems like a base on my analysis. You can cut down twenty percent easily. If you can cut down fuel consumption to a certain level, right? And I'm going to give you the money, so five、uh, thousand. Like when I I kind of heard from that CEO, I thought it's quite amazing. She said I give them five thousand per month. Those thirty truck driver, and he said thirty five thousand, right? Times thirty. But every month, I make money for one million because they have better driver behavior. So they kind of compete. They give a very good incentive to them. If you improve, I give you every month additional five thousand, right? And then his fuel consumption outcome is increasing almost save one million per month. And for for her, she said that's quite easy calculation. Right. So anyway, this is the one that I also learned from yesterday.、Uh, before I prepare my presentation, kind of purposely to meet with the、uh, Yunning、uh, Province. So quite thank you for for the sharing their experience too. So, anyway, I, I will stop here. But start, the smartphone itself, it can quantify those because what she did is kind of give an incentive for the people. But in some certain way, you wanted to be a more quantitatively. To analyze what's good driver behavior, bad driver behavior, can you every 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 week or something you hit a pattern, you can analyze who has the potential to save the energy, and then in what way, then you can kind of more,、uh, I would say explicitly, you can you can improve that、uh, in a more systematic way. Yeah, thank you. A bad driver, you know. I always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> got it. 好，那谢谢，因为时间的关系，我们是真的谢谢蔡教授哈，这么精彩呃精辟的一个专题呃这个分享哈，那是不是大家鼓掌哈？谢谢他，好，谢谢。<笑>
，那这个单元我们就我们接着下一个单元。